Hello everybody and welcome to the World Cup 2018 final. Um, it is Ornan versus Silse. Ornan has won the toss and chose to receive, unsurprisingly. Um, now let's, let's just pause it for a second here. Silse has done a very strange defense. And now I say strange because mostly people have, you know, symmetrical defenses. This is a haphazard defense. This mummy is protected because of the guard, so he can't get piled on, and this one can't be hit. But because he spread the LOS, the guard tackle can be hit, which is um, isn't that isn't that strange? That's not something you see every day. Very very strange defense. Anyway, um, <laughs> before this game, Ornan's taken shadowing on this blitzer, um, <laughs> and that's because he won the Rebel League. He qualified from Rebel. Um, is named Rebel Rampage, the name of his team. Silse qualified from Franco Ball. Um, Silse is French, Ornan's American. And yeah, this is he's taken shadowing. Obviously, it's not it's not a bad skill, it's better than not having shadowing. But compared to the opportunity cost of say block on this catcher or block on the thrower or leader on the thrower, um, yeah, so he, but you see but if he'd had a tight LOS, this this guy would have been a lot more protected. Um, but because he had this, the, because he had the the gaps in the LOS, he was able to get these knockdowns and get the two dice. He went for the he went for the follow. Now I wouldn't have been surprised to have not followed there and then retreated, but he went all in, went for the follow, got the got the pile on, got the KO, and uh, yeah, that's a ballsy play by on. And I mean, fair play to him. You know, there's a lot on the line in this. Second place gets fifteen hundred dollars and an Asus pack. A, worth an approximate retail value of four thousand three hundred dollars, and first place gets three thousand cash dollars, and an Asus pack with an approximate total retail value of six thousand seven hundred. So, fifteen hundred real dollars and two thousand four hundred retail value pack difference for this game. <laughs> and he's to pick shadow, so fair play to him. Um, Silse took. Guard on his on his other mummy, so he's got two block guard mummies, which is very nice. Obviously, the, see the only skills that Silse has taken is block guard and tackle, and um, mostly that's all all Ornan's taken apart from the shadowing. So this is interesting because th this foul doesn't feel good. Um, you know, and I said it, he's already player down. What I like to do against piling on guys is try to just limit their impact. Uh, if he'd sandwiched in between two mummies here or something, it'd been very hard for him to stand up and he could have just kept him out of the game and he could have maybe, you know, maybe he's got the foul later. This is a golden opportunity to foul him though with four assists, you know, very likely to break armour. But um, the problem is, what what if you don't break armour and get sent off or get sent off for a stun? I only make a foul. Well, I try to only make a foul when I'm happy with getting sent off for a stun, and there's no way Silse was happy with getting sent off there, especially not for a stun. Now, if he makes a KO, at least he, he can fight the drive a little bit, but yeah, th this is the thing. He, he went four ghouls, and, and I can really see an argument for three ghouls to get the 13 players, because um, that, that, that foul's a lot, a lot. You're a lot happier on making that foul if you've got 13 players total. But as it is, he's, you know, Ornan's got panning on Mighty Blow. He's got a Mighty Blow guy. He's he's rolled pretty well all tournament. So I don't think you really want to, uh, you know, give him more chances. You know, 12 players, I don't, you don't want to run the risk of removing them. But on the other hand, if you don't foul, you might just pile on every turn and kill things. Um, so there you go, he gets tackle on the on the exposed ghoul and gets a, gets a Kaz. So three players down on turn two. And uh, yeah, that's pretty much it for Silse. Pretty much not defending already. Already, he's basically relegated to to you know damage limitation effectively after turn two. <laughs> it's brutal, isn't it? He does have the mummies though, so if he can stick in the mummies, and the bonehead wasn't really big at all, but it helps a little bit. So you know, he's he's not out of it. Three players down on turn two, but obviously, it's bad because. <sighs> Could he have fouled? He could have just fouled again, but again, what if he just gets sent off again? Also, it must be said, he failed a three-dice block on a on a blockless catcher last turn. He's failed another three-dice block on a blockless catcher this turn. And at least he's got in, in contact with a, with a mummy, but... And now he's just 
leaving this guy alone a little bit sticking the sticking the mummy on him but but he's got the uh, blitz here if he wants to if he wants to stand him up so I think yeah the first thing you do is block here so maybe you get the surf and um, if he pushes to here then you can push there and then surf him so or he could push there and then push there and then surf whatever there's a few ways you could have surfed uh, he gets the pow which to be fair blitzing the mummy now and, and advancing here is a fine thing but he did have the chance to uh, just get an extra assist in and blitz with a palm but he goes for the higher value target and positional advantage as well not getting hit by the mummy and gets a KO so yeah <laughs> four players down on turn three including a mummy down is basically zero chance for Silse stopping this touchdown and uh, funnily enough Wolfbark I remember Wolfbark was you know a bit a bit unhappy about about me saying that um, that Ungern kind of deserved to beat him because he thought he just you know the the Wolfbark got one mummy removed at one point and and that was just enough to swing the match well <laughs> Silse has got a mummy down, a guard tackle down, a ghoul down, a zombie down, and it's turn three. <laughs> so yeah, he makes he makes a KO back. So you know if he gets a few more, that can do something. But it doesn't. It's not helping really right now. And he's only got he's only got two. Yeah, just run away. There's there's no way he can force an early score here. No way you can do anything. The best thing he can do is run away. Um, <laughs> Nightmare, absolute nightmare for Silse. Obviously not a nightmare for Onan. Onan's pretty, feeling pretty good about himself right now. Uh, this this Pom could even blitz the mummy here, couldn't he? He's got so much guard, he can just bring it all in. And he's still got less guard than he could have had overall. Um, because he, he had to skip, he had to get an extra tackle playing against Amazons, but then it works out quite well, doesn't it, playing against four ghouls. You really you really want the tacklers against ghouls. And um Yeah, it's it's really worked out nicely for him playing Undead in the final. Lucky he got through the well not lucky, um <laughs> you know not lucky, but good for him that he got through the game against a run because that was scary with the weight completely wasted tackle. Um but now it's, he's really getting value out of having two tackle, which wouldn't necessarily have got value from. See, so yeah, obviously you're going to pile on there. You know, a lot of people say you should only pile on if you break AV naturally, but that's that's quite frankly bollocks. <laughs> because there's just too much value in piling on. It's too good. It's overpowered. Even Mighty Blow piling on is overpowered. People like to say how overpowered Claw Pom is. But just piling on Mighty Blow itself is ridiculous. But if you if you notice here, what Onan has done is he's com to get this two dice hit, he's completely ignored the ball. Um, well, completely unprotected the ball. So there's a little bit of a chance for Silse to now try and try and get these ghouls in and hope hope uh, Onan makes a mistake. Um, you know, he could even make GFIs here until he used a reroll. Uh, not saying it'd have been a great idea, but you know, maybe he maybe he could have done try to get further away because yeah, he gets a knockdown there. No, it doesn't. It was it was a catcher. But yeah, you know, all all of Onan's players are tied up here, so this isn't um, this isn't so easy. Maybe this guy could have been here actually, uh, something like that. You know, maybe he could have done something differently to stop that run through. Um, because as it happens, it was pretty easy for him to run back and cage up. But yeah, maybe, maybe these guys had GFI'd or something. Or gone here and here or something. You know, some, maybe, maybe, maybe Silse could have done something better there. But I mean, that's being obviously hypercritical. I'm not really saying that he should have done. Because, you know, he had three minutes and he's lost four players in three turns. Um... Double skulls there, doesn't really matter. Oh, I'm pretty lucky to get the extra training off the kickoff. I mean, he's only got two rerolls. He's got away with having two rerolls, which is pretty crazy. You know, the main the main problem.
problem, if you like, is with winning six games in this format is getting lucky enough to win six games. And, you know, re-rolls is your hedge against being unlucky, isn't it? And he's, he's also got 13 players to hedge against Kaz. But, you know, if you've got 12 players and three re-rolls, then you've got a bit of each. Um, and, yeah, I'm going... If he'd taken leader on the thrower, then I really like his build, but... <laughs> he's taken shadowing. <laughs> yeah, now I still say can't really do anything, you know. It wasn't much of a test to get a cage there, and he got the cage. And now he's just, you can either, there's, there's funny enough, what he does here is, he, as you can see, he's made this T-shape so he can blitz there and then get an extra block. What he could have actually done is, um, he could have put this guy here and he could have run all the way around, one, two, three, four, five, six, and then if he, he could have chained it into an additional block. So this way, if he gets the push, he gets to hit him again. If he had, if he had put there, he could have got the power and got to hit another one as well. So he could have been even greedier than he was. It, w it was good play to do that. Um, but you see, he's moved someone around here anyway. So he, it would have been absolutely better, I think, to have you know potentially got two knockdowns rather than kind of making sure of one knockdown, if you like. Um, but yeah, you know, can still cage up over here and. Oh, actually, oh, I, I, I think caging over here would have just been... Oh, he wants to foul. <laughs> right, so it wouldn't have just been better because he wants to foul. That's fair enough then. He's, he's certainly got the reserves to do it. And obviously, Ghoul's armor 7 with no regen. Prime fouling targets. So yeah, absolutely. I'm absolutely on board with that foul there from on. And uh, yeah, it makes sense to cage up there. Obviously, it would have been safer over here. Because if he had failed to break AV there, then it's a six plus dodge for a wonder uh, for an uphill. That's 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 harder than it, you know, easier than it could be. Do you know what I mean? So um, if he had just set up one, then it would been it'd been harder. So you know, and again, that's nitpicky. Um, <laughs> I appreciate that. I'm not really criticising from for it. In fact, getting the fouling was better, better than making the ball safe. I think. So this is interesting, you can either, one, two, three, four, five, six, you can either hit the ghoul, um, or he could hit the mummy with pom, but then he might get fouled, or he could just make a big foul. So he's, he's got a few cha he's got a few options of what to do here. Oh, double skulls again. So, you know, he, he's rolled the double skulls, but it hasn't hurt him because he's annihilated Silsa's team instantly. Um, <laughs> so yeah, that's... That's alright. I mean... Yeah, it, I think, I think, that, I think that's good and then get the foul in. Get sent off. But of course, he's got 13 players, he hasn't taken any damage. Just a KO, so absolutely fine. I mean, the, the payoff there is huge. I like that foul a lot more than fouling the pom, um, because just because Onan does have the apo, if if the pom had died or been cast, any cast on the pom would probably, probably would have probably used his apo, especially if it had died. If it died or badly hurt, he's definitely going to use his apo. So uh, died because of the two player swing with raise the dead. So you know the foul really wasn't that good for, for Silse, especially as he had him controlled. He could have had him controlled with the two mummies. Now, it's easy to criticize the foul, um, but you know, I'm not really criticizing it. I'm just saying it was it was risky, wasn't it? Um, and their shadowing had the chance to work but didn't. And you know, it was it was like his foul on the on the wolf in the semi-final. That was really risky. He did it with a ghoul that time. And he got the Kaz that time, so you know if he'd got the Kaz this time, it would have looked a great foul. And uh, yeah, you know if you don't roll the dice, you don't succeed on on some players like that. So I'm not, I'm not saying I'm certainly not saying it was wrong. I'm not criticising him at all, but it was every foul's risky, isn't it? Um, especially as you know how dangerous Ornan's team is. But yeah, in that spot, I probably wouldn't have fouled the wolf that he did in the first game, but that really worked out for him. So. 
it's not about me and <laughs> it's not about what I do it's what about the players and the pitch are doing and yeah you know it, it's it you can't do results based analysis can you that's the thing so and you know you can't say that the players on the pitch or the pieces whatever you, you know there's the coaches or the people making the decisions and the players are just the pixels you can't now if this was a real sporting event you could praise the players athletic performance of <laughs> Of, of knocking these guys out but you can't can you in blood ball it's just it's more like chess you can only you know praise and criticize the coaches um making the decisions and that's all there is to talk about really um now i think i think on and played that pretty much perfectly i mean you know there's Yes, you can. If, you, if depending on how much you want to nitpick, you can absolutely nitpick because you've got all the time in the world, and they're playing under pressure in three minutes. So there's always things. I don't think anyone's ever played a perfect game of blood bowl, you know. But it was mostly, you know, it was pretty much as smooth as it could be. Um, but similarly, Silsa didn't really do anything wrong, did he? Yes, there might have been marginally better positional things he could have done, and same with Onan. But you know, really, n not really. Um, now this is, let's have a look at this. The throw rock doesn't get cast. Um, how many players does does Silse have here? Three, six, eight players, nine players. So he couldn't have got the one turn. So he's right to hit for hit for damage here, and, and you know set up like this so he's got a better chance if there's a riot. Um, he gets the cars, he gets the death, so he had to apple that because if he doesn't apple this death, let's have a look at this. He's down to eleven men max, and then Silse goes up to eleven men max as well by getting it raising dead. So he had to apple that death. He got lucky to actually get the badly hurt from it, fifty fifty. Um, but you know, at least at least don't take the death uh, because yeah, at the moment Silse is ten max. Um, you know, hopefully he'll get this money back to make it a game. So I think yeah, hitting with mighty blow. Is absolutely the right play, um, and hope for a riot because yeah, the nine players he was he was never going to get a one turn with agility three. Well, not never, but <laughs> I think you know on the balance of probabilities, going for more punches is definitely where the value is there. And again, he's only got a few minutes to to think about this. He's probably not in the happiest mood of his life the way the game's gone. You know, you're playing for fifteen hundred dollars of real money and and two grand's worth of uh, of gaming stuff from Asus. So you know you're probably not too happy about the way the game's gone in, in Silse's defence there. But even then, I I wouldn't have gone for it. Nine players is basically impossible. It's spread LOS nine players. You would have to be relying on a touchback, and then if you got a right, you wouldn't have a chance. So no, I think I think you did the right play going for going for hits there um, but the crucial thing is the mummy stays out here so he's got he's got nine players versus 11 he can score I think he should try and wait as long as he can before he scores but he's got to be willing to score at any any chance he gets <laughs> you know it, this isn't so much about can I score a turn eight it's can I score <laughs> you know? two players down onan has got his got his tacklers he's got loads of guard he's got more strength you know he's got more players equal strength with a with a mummy and then more players so he's got more strength on the pitch more movement you know it's it's absolutely horrific for Silse here so he, he could go for like a two turn chance just to try and get the mummy back um you know i think fouling's off the off the agenda now you know you could try and roll dice to get lucky but that's yahtzee and you don't want to do that do you when it's when there's when there's money on the line um if it was a champs ladder game or something stupid but you really can't do it and now with nine players this is this is the funny thing about the offset los right <laughs> Yeah, Onan gets a blitz there. Let's let's not let's not gloss over that fact that Onan gets the blitz. But here's the thing with the with the offset LOS. You 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 need players to to protect against this, and and he just does not have the players still set. So he couldn't defend against the blitz. And people say, oh, this the, at least the blitz is kind of skill based because you can play around it. Well, guess what? When you <laughs> when your teams like this, you can't. Um, now this is this is a bit of a mistake by Onan here, in my opinion, because he's got two tacklers. So I think you either try to base them both, one, two, 
three, four, five, six, nine. Maybe you can't. Maybe keep one back as a safety and then uh, and then only commit one. Um, and he actually does commit two. So not only are two forward, they're both on the right-hand side of the pitch as well. And this is in the end zone. So three times out of eight, it's a touchback. So I think maybe it's just just committing one tackle a forward and keeping one back as the safety would have been would have been better because you know you you know fine well if you're on and that this this has got nearly a 50 50 chance of going to this school and he's on for a bit of a breakaway and he gets the touch back and it goes to the school that was the only choice he had so I think I think yeah I think on and did misplay a little bit there um, you know now now that is being critical and. You know, that's fair enough, isn't it? <laughs> but yeah, I think that, you know, I don't think it was terrible, but I think it was a little bit, you know, he could have played safer. I mean, committing both tacklers to one side. And I mean, this one isn't so far forward, but one, one, one's forward and one isn't really back. If if the other tackler was here, it would be, it would be much better. So yeah, it blocks, blocks the white free. Now... He's got he's got four squares left, so he could get to here. One, two, three, four, five, six GFI, and he could you could get the ball pretty screened actually. He could even make more GFIs. Now I didn't like this. He he occupied the ogre there. I don't know if he was planning on hitting the ogre or not at that point, but the ogre's already based. Yes, it stops him blitzing off and basing with the ogre, but you don't really care because you've got dodge anyway. So I think. Silse probably should have pushed his luck and you know he could have he could have even just made two GFIs with this guy and two GFIs with a with a ghoul or whatever. I think he really needed to push his luck and make GFIs and screen at that turn. And and that's not you know Yeah. <laughs> so Onan here is trying to free up the tackler to blitz. Um he gets the push. So now he can't really blitz with a tackler because now he'd have to block and then one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. It would now be a GFI to hit with a tackler. So now he can hit without and, and you know and then do things later. So I think it's right to abandon the, the tackle hit once it, but if he, if he had powered on the first hit, then this guy could have blocked and then the um the tackler could have hit without GFIs. But as it happened, um I think he was absolutely right not to go for GFIs to hit the ball. Just get him back where where he probably should have been the la the last turn. And uh, yeah, two dice in the vault, of course. On and rolls a pout, but he is down to one reroll. You know, he only had two rerolls, so so that double score is pretty. Gives it leaves Silse a chance here. If Silse can can get back from this, obviously we've got an on and scatter here as uh, his catcher gets it. Now he put his catcher in there. You know, he was in the right spot. Um, Okay, it was the only spot he could have got two dice from. No, he could have put him in a, in a worse spot to get the, the assist. So he put him in the best spot to assist. Um, and now silsa has got a chance. Now this is the, this is the thing for Silsa here. You've got to think, th this guy's moving first of all. If you block this chap and knock him over, it's without block though, so it's it's not something you want to do soon. If you do that, then this, this zombie here who's just generated an extra block could have gone one, two, three, four and base the tackler pretty critical to base the tackler and this bone this ogre bonehead here which maybe he shouldn't have uh maybe he shouldn't have even activated oh no he had to activate him didn't he i think he was already boneheaded no he wasn't already boneheaded so maybe he just shouldn't have activated him there because he was doing a good job um this this is a dodgy one because what you want to do is you want to recover with a ghoul right so you want to blitz with this white and then even if you get a push, you've got guard, so you've got two dice on the catcher. Um, the the safer way, if you like, is not having to make a three plus dodge. Blitz with the ghoul. If you get a push, you can then move the ghoul over here and then get two dice on the ball. But then that makes your recovery a lot worse. Um, you'd rather be recovering with a movement seven guy who's closer with dodge. So you really want to be recovering with him. Um, but in any case, I would I would like to get this pow done and then move the zombie and attack him you know and then and then have some kind of a breakaway but silsa has got a chance despite everything silsa has got a chance now um now that onan's on one reroll even though he's lost the ball on his own drive so silsa does silsa does the safer play in terms of you know just avoiding this failure but it's it's not as good payoff uh, irrelevant block there randomly first i didn't really like that um and here we go and he gets the pow 
and then re-rolls. And I just, I don't know if he thought that white was still knocked out or something, or if he just forgot about the attack or whatever, and now he hasn't got the re-roll for this, but yeah, that was, that was hideous. Um, <laughs> that was hideously bad from, from Silsa there, you know, and... It, you know, it, it's high pressure. He's he's getting battered. He probably thinks he's he's you know been robbed a bit, and his head's gone a little bit there, hasn't it? Um, yeah, horror. Got to feel got to feel bad for Silsa there. Um, but you know, on the bright side for him, he probably lost anyway. I mean, it was going really really poorly. Even if he powered him to here, and then he would have been a couple of dodges to try and get through with a white. He would have had the tackler there anyway to you know the blitzer there to hit. Obviously, he's not taking any risks blocking with the thing. He goes down the side here. He could have switched around to the middle. He didn't have to get forward. Um, I understand why he did, of course, to try and to try and do stuff. But um, yeah, he, I, and he could have maybe gone back to the middle. But again, this isn't a criticism. This is just an alternative option. You could have also just activated him again. Um, <laughs> but he goes for the block. I would have probably not activated him last turn and not activated him this turn either. But he activated him and boneheaded then activated and double skulled and and yes that's lucky. Now he does he does a block here. Now if you think about it this block really doesn't matter. And I and I will I will be I will be honest here. I you know I was thinking of dodging this guy out and then one dicing. But, of course, this is tackle, so you can't do this. And this is the kind of tunnel vision you get. You think, oh, this is a good block. Now we can block him and get him through. But, actually, it didn't matter because he can't get him through. So, the only thing that matters is blocking this guy. Um, so, he can free up a, a zombie to go here or here. And then this ghoul can run around. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, GFI. Two dice on the ball with block. Get it get it off there. Scatter goes in all the way over here or something. And then, and then a ghoul goes and gets it. That's his only hope. You know, that's literally his only hope. So this was an irrelevant block. But I was guilty of, of um, n you know, not seeing the tackle here and thinking that this dodge out was the best play because it would have been if there was no tackle. One, two, three, four, five, six. Um, even though he hasn't got blocked. So he, even then, this this guy, there's there's pros and cons to having to make a dodge or a GFI with this guy. Um, so yeah, so he kind of makes an irrelevant block with the mummy there. Uh, now he makes Now he makes the one that he needs. I mean, it's irrelevant, you know, it's, but it's still with Mighty Blow, and it's still two dice with block. It wasn't that likely to fail, but it was still marginally, you know, marginally not required. That doesn't mean to say it's bad. This one, though, was without block, and that it is re-roll, and that was really, uh, that was a really unnecessary block, because you don't want to dodge away from tackle when you can dodge away from not tackle and hit with block. So... I mean, what he probably wanted to do, he probably wanted to recover with this guy. So then he did the right thing of making a second dodge um, without having re-rolls. It was better to make the second dodge than the GFI. But yeah, you know, what he probably was thinking was he probably wanted to blitz with this guy even through the tackle um, so that if the ball went here or here, he would have had a ghoul to recover. So actually, maybe this was, maybe this was required, but then maybe the other one wasn't. So, you know, he, he should have basically decided which course of action he was going, whether it was this one dodging away from tackle or the other one. I mean, this was this was way the nicer play. The only thing was the presence of tackle. Because, you know, then, yeah, as I say, if the ball goes out there or there, you've got the other ghoul. But that failure means that it's GG, basically. Um, the chance of... Or, well, Silsi has no chance of stopping this score <laughs> now. No chance of stopping it unless unless Ornan stalls. You know, he's, he's obviously got to pressure it. Um, Ornan can either stall or, you know, hope that a miracle doesn't happen. Um, it's going to need a miracle now for, for Silsa to do anything. Basically. And yeah, he did. He did. I mean, it was a horrible mistake not not taking not taking the power of the tackler. You know, that was a real a real mistake. And you know that that was always going to be the thing in this was was if if the coaches make like a big mistake, and anyone can, you know, it, it, you know the best the best player in the world, um, whoever he is, could, <laughs> could could you know anyone can make a mistake in any single game. So n no one plays mistake free blood bowl probably in a single game. Now, obviously, certain mistakes are more costly than the others, and no one plays optimal positioning every turn. I don't think anyone knows what optimal positioning is every turn. Um, so there you go. That was a that was another random cas there. 
And yeah, this is actually pretty tough on and to deal with, isn't it? Marginally? No, not really. He's got a tackle here. One, two, three, four, five, six. Oh no, it's a GFI. He's only got one re-roll, re so he doesn't really want to. He doesn't really want to GFI to hit there. He will casually, casually cas another ghoul first. But yeah, he does go. Oh, no, he pits there. Okay. I, I don't even like making this block then. If he's going to score, I don't like making that block. Cause it's cause it's a zombie, um, you know. I think I think hitting a ghoul, great. I think hitting a zombie there, I don't like it. Again, that doesn't make it wrong. Who knows? Who knows whether it's right or not? You know, this is this is why I'm saying, this is why I'm just saying this is what I do because you can't say whether it's optimal or not because you just don't know. I, well, I mean, I don't know. I don't know if anyone does know. And then there you go. He makes an unnecessary block, trying to get damage on a zombie, um, and he's used a reroll that. He just didn't need to make, and and I, I didn't know at this point that he's made this double skull this turn. But, you know, he was going to score. Though he wasn't going to stall, so he didn't need to make these blocks, did he? The, the first one, hitting the, hitting the ghoul, you know, that's great, because it's a ghoul. The zombies don't matter. <laughs> you know? Yes, it's, it's easier if he kills another zombie, but... It's, you know, what's going what's gonna to get Silsa into the game is his positionals. So... It was. I, I much prefer blocking the ghoul and only blocking the ghoul. Um, and there, he paid for his greed there, really, on him with, with that double skull. That wasn't. That wasn't really so much bad dice as bad play. I think it was greedy play. It wasn't bad. It was greedy. And again, he only punished for it one in thirty-six times. But yeah, I think that was a bit greedy. This time, he's maybe he's learnt his lesson a little bit and kept the tackle up back. Um, but yeah, yeah. So Orland's made a little bit of a. Mis I mean, marginal again. I'm. It's not really being, you know, I'm not really saying it was bad, yeah? I'm not saying it's bad. But the fact that he put two tacklers over there meant that it was a bit of a mistake, in my, in my opinion. Uh, I think I would have definitely wanted a tackler back there. But yeah, that's the thing. Who knows? Who knows what optimal Blood Bowl is? And until, until we have a supercomputer Blood Bowl AI, nobody knows what optimal play is. So I'm just trying to uh, do my best here. And there's a blitz, and that is, that is an absolute game-ending blitz there. The first blitz was bad, you know, the, the first blitz that Onan got was, was ridiculous and almost certainly game ending. This one, there's no way you can play around it. He's got eight players on the pitch, he cannot cover the whole pitch. People say bad players get stung by blitz more than good players and that is true. But once you've got eight players, due, due to just Kaz dice, you know, nothing, nothing spectacular from Onan to, to get in this spot. Um, just, just dice and... Yeah, now he's just lost the ball. It's caged up, basically. And that's just that's just game over, isn't it? And, you know, it, other people other people could have had these Ornans dice and, and not be winning 2-0, you know, absolutely. But probably not people who were good enough to qualify for the World Cup. That's the thing. Um, Blood Bowl is a skill-based game. And, you know, normally... You know, like... The, the, it, it's it's hard to say what percent is skill and what percent is luck. Obviously, when p players are closer in skill, luck becomes more of a more of a factor. Um, if a game's about fifty fifty, then you know, and they're both good, it, the dice are going to be almost almost not what decides it. We're going to be a much larger factor than you know playing somebody who's a complete beginner. Then anyone can get lucky in a in a single game. But if 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 uh, if Ornan was new to Blood Bowl. Silsay could have probably still won this with the dice he's had, but Onan is not new to Blood Bowl. <laughs> and, uh, and that means Silsay has basically no chance of winning this game at all. Um, I don't think he should beat himself up about, about taking the, you know, about re-rolling the POW. I mean, it was, it was awful. <laughs> it was completely an awful, horrendous mistake, but really, the way this game's gone with all these blitzers and and all the all the cars, you know, he really, he really had no chance. I don't, I don't think you would have, you would have had a marginal chance if he got lucky on that turn or if he GFI'd a bit. And you know, he he could have done things differently and maybe broken away and scored. But it would still been one one, and I think Orlando would have still won two one even if he had scored there. Um, but you know, who knows? But yeah, I don't think, I don't think Silse should beat himself up. I think just write this one off. Write this one off to the dice, I think, is what, is what he's got to do, because 
it was it was a brutal game, um, as most of Ornan's game have been. Um, and you know, again, Ornan didn't really do anything wrong. You know, he played he played really well. Um, Silsa played really well, apart from the horrendous mistake. But but that's it, isn't it? At, at this level, it's it's kind of it's almost almost every single game in the World Cup. You can say that the winners had better dice. You know, um, almost every time. And and obviously that's subjective, because. It doesn't really matter how many armor breaks you've made if you've if you've made a crucial double one or quad skull that's lost you the game, but um, yeah, Ornan in <laughs> Ornan is just beating up everybody he's played, um, and that helps, doesn't it? That helps a lot. Whereas there were other people who had humans and had five players for for the start of the second half, and and that could have happened to Ornan on a different day, um, but it didn't. So, and, and and that's what I mean, you know. That's wow, another double skull. He's getting he's getting horrific dice now. The last few turns. So yeah, maybe if maybe if uh, Silse had scored that one, maybe if he had taken the power and had scored, maybe all these bad dice would have stung on. And you know, he's he's finally without rerolls for basically the only time in the in the in the entire tournament, despite starting with two rerolls and not getting leader. And uh, yeah, his lack of rerolls has, has never hurt him. Um, Apart from kind of now when it's too late, so. But yeah, absolutely, absolutely full credit to Ornan. Um, at least I can say I lost to the champ. Um, yeah, Sil Silse goes for the dodge around here, but it leaves him not in range to score. It was it was the higher odds of getting there, but he, he can't get in range to score now. So he should have gone four plus three plus to get in range. He he literally can't score, so he can't get a consolation. Can't get the consolation touchdown, um, and it looks unlikely for Ornan to get a third. So, yeah, that's that. That's that. I mean, it is deserved. You know, I don't think you know he hasn't he hasn't done anything wrong, Ornan. You know, really, like you could you could say you could say marginal things here and there and throughout all the games, but you know, no one's even close to perfect. So, you know, I'm not really criticizing him for anything. He's any slight imperfections in his play. It, most of the time he's played pretty pretty close to perfect and uh, yeah that's that's as much as you can ask for isn't it again another bad dice but again it doesn't matter because it's turn 15 and he's already 2-0 up and there's no way in it for Silse so yeah if, imagine if Silse had managed to get that and <laughs> managed to select <laughs> select the knockdown maybe he could have done something because these dice have been horrific but of course at the time the way the game was going it didn't look like um, Silse would have had a chance, so I don't think Silse should feel bad about that. But obviously, that was it was an absolute killer. It was an absolute killer in the, in, even before then. You know, sixteen AV breaks to six. Yes, he's got piling on ninety blow, but that's still an outrageous amount of armor breaks. Um, <laughs> Forty-seven blocks and sixteen AV breaks is 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 crazy odds. He was actually probably unlucky on how many removals he made with those, but then the KO didn't come back, so it was more like a Kaz. Um, dice rolls almost perfect for Silse there, perfectly what you'd expect. Um, go for it, we're good. Uh, 28, 34, 21, so not many knockdowns, but then also not too many skulls, well, quite a lot of skulls, but three times as many skulls as pals, but, you know, overall 21, 34, 28 is... Lots of pushes and not many pals. And on and 29 skulls. That's more skulls than pushes is, is ridiculous. Um, what's that? 37, 25, 32. So not not awful, big, awful amount of skulls. I mean, 29, nearly as many skulls as total pals. But the, a lot of them came towards the end when it didn't matter, you know? And again, you know, if you're getting some with three dice, so there's a pat, there's a skull there, skull there, and a pow. So as long as you get a, as long as you get a pow every time you roll a skull, it's not even bad. But he did roll multiple double skulls, six double skulls, I think he rolled in the entire game. So um, you know, he did he did get blood block dice there, but it it just didn't really matter that much because he'd made four cas instantly. Um, eight activated his ogre eighteen times in a sixteen turn game. <laughs> um, Again, that's something I, I tend to be more conservative with the big guys, especially when you've got a lead. Um, I think there's times maybe you could have not activated him or something, but 
you know, he, 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 with the two blitzes, he activated him 18 times in a 16 turn game. So that that's funny. Um, but yeah, you know, like, yeah, absolutely, yeah. You know, yes, Ornan's had, you know, mostly better dice than all of his opponents, sure. But he still he still won, and plenty of people wouldn't have won in those situations. So absolute full credit, Ornan. Congratulations to him. And uh, also congratulations to Silsa. Silsa still finished second, you know, so he's done great. He's just got to think about how well he's done and uh, and try and not think about that tackle hit. <laughs> because, you know, the game was slipping away at that point anyway. So, you know, it, 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 I do feel bad for him, though, because, you know, he's always going to wonder what if now, isn't he? <laughs> but I think he shouldn't and uh, he should be all right. So there you go. Thanks for watching, everyone. If you enjoyed it, don't forget to leave a like and subscribe and stay fantastic.